Welcome back to Mine Operator. Today we are going to discuss the assay results that we received from the lab. And we're going to discuss where and how we took our samples, what test methods we chose, and where we shipped them to, and identified opportunities to follow up on, such as the tailings. We need to do a lot more sampling and testing in the tailings. Finding the high grade underground, we know exactly what to look for. So we're excited to go back and explore underground and then run new samples through our mill site to obtain production concentration ratios. So let's get into it. Okay, first up is MT1-9HO.1. Now what does that represent? M is for mill site, T is for tailings, and 1 through 9 are the samples we took. We did not concentrate them, so we used HO, head ore, and dot one, as this is our first assay in this area. Now the results came back at two parts per million gold and 24 parts per million silver, which converts to two grams of gold and 24 grams of silver. Not exciting numbers, but there is some opportunity here, and let me explain what I mean. When we took our samples, we noticed that holes one through five were really boring looking, uh, not mineralized at all, but samples six through nine looked great. They were primarily the tailings, there were sulfides in them, and we have a feeling that we completely diluted the sample with low-grade material, so we need to go back and assay only the cyanide tailings separately to get a good representative sample and get a better idea of what the grade is. The current mine owner has received assays around a quarter ounce to the ton on the tailings. So we'll go back, we'll grab another sample and find out if we can duplicate his results. Next up is TD1 through 4 HO.1. That is top dump, samples 1 through 4, head ore, and our first sample. Gold came in at 1.6 parts per million, or 1.6 grams, and silver came in at 22 parts per million, or 22 grams. These four samples cover a very large area on this top dump or area of stage ore. We didn't notice large amounts of high grade ore, but lower grade ore in this area. This is the sample that we decided to concentrate with test TD1 through 4, C for concentrates, dot 1 being the first assay. And these results came in at 12 parts per million gold and 38 parts per million silver. We did receive 0 0.01 or one hundredths of a gram platinum, which would be about 10 parts per billion. So this came in at the lower detection limit of the assay. We started off with 34 pounds of milled material, minus 20 mesh, and it produced a concentrate of two and a half pounds. That is a concentration ratio of 13.6 to one. Harry ran 34 pounds through a sluice four foot long with sections of gold hog roughing mat and fine gold mat, then ran all of the tailings through the sluice with expanded metal and miner's moss. Technically, we had three forms of concentrates produced, but what we did is we mixed them together and sent them off for assay. So these are the results from that assay and combining all the concentrates together. Now we can get a much higher concentration ratio with our shaker table, with our primary cons, and then our middlings or secondaries, but the grade of the head ore doesn't warrant doing such a test. We did find high grade ore on the top dump. Now there's not much of it up there, but we know what to look for when we go underground and explore. So we really need to get into the mine shaft, explore that area, as well as the portal to the south and find out if we can find any high grade ore left in the mine that we could extract and process. 
And when I say high grade ore, I mean 105 ounces per ton of silver. Now that is pretty good. And no, we did not send any of the high grade grab samples in for assay. That's because there wasn't much of it around and we didn't need that reference point at this time. If we locate high grade ore underground, then we will take proper channel samples and drill samples and send them in for assay. I'd also like to take a minute here and say that we did not just take an assay of one side of the rock and believe that's what the mineralization is going to be throughout. We did take assays on all sides of the rock and average them together, and we did see high values of silver, gold, and even got some hits on palladium. So one of the things that we can do in this instance is crush and mill that sample down into a fine powder and also take assays of the sample that way. And then it's just one data point. Then send it off to a lab and have it confirmed again. You need, I like to say, three data points in order to start believing what you have is true. And then the next course of action would be to find out if it's recoverable with your current process. Now that I got that out of the way, let's take a look at the certificate of analysis and the lab we chose. For this round of testing, we decided to send our samples off to ALS Geochemistry in Reno, Nevada. They are one of the ISO accredited labs that we like to use. There are many reputable labs around the US and we use many of them. But for this test, we decided to send it to ALS Geochemistry. Now, if you don't have a crusher and you can't crush any of your samples or pulverize them down to the size that you need, some of these labs perform those services. So get the schedule of fees, go through it, look at the types of services they offer and how much, and that may help you during your sampling program. We chose test method ME-GRA21 and 22, which is a fire assay for gold and silver with a gravimetric finish. We chose the 50 gram sample size and in green, you can see the lower and upper detection limits. For gold, it's 0 0.05 up to 10,000 parts per million. And for silver, it's 5 to 10,000 parts per million. We also chose test method PGM-ICP27. This is a fire assay for platinum, palladium, and gold with an ICP AES finish. You can see the lower detection limit there circled in green at 0 0.01 up to 100 parts per million for each of the precious metals. ICP-AES is inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy. This is a spectral method used to determine the elemental composition of samples and it can also be used to quantify the elemental concentration within the sample. The reason why I'm taking the time to walk you through this is you may have questions right now while you're sampling out in the field from how large of a sample should I submit to the lab to how should I prepare the sample, the submittal form, and anything else. Feel free to give them a call. Talk to their lab manager, or one of the chemists there, and they can give you some recommendations on what type of test methods to choose for your type of ore. If this video has helped you at all, or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to respond to your comment and answer your question. We are excited to go back into the field, explore that mine and try to locate any high grade ore. We're also gonna go back and take a lot more samples of the tailings and send those in for assay and do a, a, some testing of our own on it as well. If you didn't have a chance to watch the video entitled Prospecting for Gold and Silver with an XRF Gun, I'll leave a link to the video. Be sure to check it out. We thank you for watching. Crush that like button. And if you haven't already and we've earned your subscription, please subscribe. And thanks for watching Mine Operator.